Hey guys, welcome back to Mobile Dwellings where we are building a sweet tiny house inside of this Bluebird Transit bus. We also live in a schoolie ourselves, which we built in our first series. And when we're not building, we are traveling around the country touring other people's tiny homes on wheels. Thank you guys so much for being here. In this video, we're going to be installing a 120 volt, 15,000 BTU mini split heat pump made by Pioneer. Now, if you watch me build Gilligan Phantom, you would know that we put our condenser on the back of the bus. It's a bit of an eyesore. It's not my favorite, although it was really easy. However, ideally, I think it goes underneath the bus and so that's what we're going to be doing in this build. We are going with the same unit that we installed onto our bus. It's called Pioneer. It's made by Parker Davis HVAC. Actually headquartered near us here in Florida. These guys saw that we were doing another build. They saw that we installed our unit on our bus. They reached out to us to see if we wanted one of their units for free. We were like, yes, absolutely. That would be amazing. So we did get this unit for free and we do really appreciate Parker Davis HVAC for hooking us up with this unit. If you want to pick up one of these for yourself, there is an affiliate link below. And there is also an Amazon link for the same product. I want to make sure you guys get the best price so those two links will be down there okay let's unbox this thing Right here. right here we've got our installation manual. I'm going to refresh myself on how exactly to do this because it's been a couple years since I did it. You always want to give this a look. Don't just completely copy what I do. You need to look at this, you know, and take what I do into consideration. Babe, thank you so much. You're welcome. Delicious smoothie. Mm. Thank you, babe. Are you enjoying this rainy day? Yeah. Bye. If you were going to be installing just one mini split in your bus, which I do think for most people and most circumstances is enough, the best location for it, in my opinion, is in the bedroom. You want to be able to retreat to a nice cool bedroom when it's really hot. The reality is up here, it's going to be very hard, all these windows, that door, the huge windshield, to keep this area optimally cool. Ideally, you may put two mini splits in your bus if you're gonna be in really hot climates, but if you're just doing one, the back is where we really appreciate ours. So I got that bracket laid out, got the hole cut, but behind the hole is a two by two, and I need to make some space for my line set to run that way. So I have to go out in the rain and get a tool. Man, it's pouring out there. It wasn't so bad. I need the jackery. Okay, so we're wiring this mini split and I've got to get this cable through the back of the mini split into the front so that I can wire it up. I'm going to put the mini split on the pillow so I don't scratch it up and we're going to figure this out. This is the cable that sends power and signal from the condenser to the head unit. So see this rough metal edge right here? We don't want the wires to vibrate on that. So this is a cable clamp. This is going to clamp the cable in place and we attach it to here, and this will prevent the cable from vibrating um, when the bus drives down the road. So I think this is important. I think you should definitely have these are available at Home Depot, Lowe's, whatever. All right, so getting the cable through here was really virtually impossible. There's just too much behind this blocking it. And when I first installed this, I didn't remember having this battle. Seems like it shouldn't be a complicated, difficult solution. The cable is probably actually just supposed to go to the side here. It's pretty easy to push that through. And this is gonna be wrapped up with these. I don't think we have to worry so much about it vibrating on this short edge. All right, so I've got this wired up. Did it based on this wiring diagram right here. This one says red, black, yellow, and then yellow slash green. And the cables never seem to match up. We've got red, black, and white instead of yellow. And then this is clearly the ground. So we've got green over here. I think this is right, but we'll see. Mini split head unit is all installed looking good, wired up. Now I have to get the line set from the bottom of the bus up into this upper cabinet area right here. All right, so let's go check on that pothole. Make sure there's nothing crazy in the way. Where are you? I don't see you. There is a second layer of insulation under some metal. I can see the chimney from under there. I pretty much know I'm in an okay location, so I'm just gonna start making a hole. Okay, so I've got a bit of a problem. I should have, I should have drilled my pilot hole after all because the edge of my circle 
is the edge of the bus wall. I gotta get that thing out of the way. I can't keep cutting through it and I gotta cut just to the left of it somehow. That was a heck of a job, but I did eventually get a hole in there. There it is right there. So our line set will be going up there. Looks pretty crappy back here, but we're gonna be filling it with foam. You're never gonna see it again. Mosquito. So now basically it's time to run the line set to the location that we're gonna be putting the mini split condenser. So let's do that. I gotta go back onto the bus. This is kind of a two person job, it really is. We just need like another two feet. Ugh. When I was building Gilligan Phantom, I said to myself many times, I'm never doing this again. And of course, here I am with the second bus doing it again. If you are not telling yourself that you're never doing this again, then you've already quit. This is hard, dirty work that most people aren't going to enjoy. I enjoy it sometimes, sometimes I absolutely do not. And when I'm crawling around in the dirt under the bus, I just don't enjoy it at all. If I do this again, which probably I will because clearly I'm a maniac, I am not doing this on a dirty money ground again. I don't need a warehouse or anything, I just need a nice concrete pad. Just wanted you guys to know, you will hate this work sometimes, you really will, I do. Okay, so that is basically my line set run. It goes from inside that upper cabinet through a hole right there into the engine bay underneath this door, cross over there to the side of this, over that big axle and into that compartment over there. So I think that's basically okay. I, of course, am going to be securing this many locations to the bus so it doesn't move around. I'm not gonna do it today or possibly even on camera. A couple things about the line set real quick. If you saw how I rolled it out to start out with, I rolled it along the ground. That is the right way to roll it out. That will give you a straight line set. You don't wanna roll it out and have a wiggly waggly line set. It'll be really hard to navigate through these spaces. Now it's very important that you do not kink this line set anywhere. So you cannot make a full 90 degree turn. Don't kink it, don't bend it too hard. It will be ruined. A lot of you have probably wondered yourselves, does this guy have any experience? How did he learn how to do this stuff? What did he do before this? Of course, most of you guys know that I've already done a bus conversion. But when I was 24, for about nine months, I worked as an HVAC and plumbing laborer. Honestly, I was not paying that much attention to what I was doing. I really was labor. Unfortunately, I didn't learn how to use the vacuum pump or the gauges. I don't actually have the skill set to do all this myself. I could learn it. You could learn it. You might have it. However, for me, it involves tools that I don't have. It should only take an HVAC laborer an hour to do this, make these connections for you, not installed, but, and that should only cost you like $125. For me, that's worth it. For other people, it'd be worth it to go get the tools. All right, on to the next thing. Okay, so we were lucky enough to get these truck box mounting brackets with our truck boxes. I imagine they are very expensive. I just don't think that we have a market for selling these without the truck boxes. I can use these brackets to mount my mini split. It's gonna be just like what I did on our bus, paid $75 for, I'll just have to cut them off of here. So I'm gonna take my angle grinder and I'm gonna cut right there. Now we gotta mount these to the frame of the bus underneath there and attach this big mini split condenser unit to it. It's definitely gonna be a little tough, but um, we got this. All right, so I've got layout done. Now I need to drill two really big holes through this really thick steel. Hopefully our drivers are up to the test. Hopefully I am too. looking pretty good in here but before I finish mounting these with more bolts I think I want to test fit the mini split in here which is gonna suck I gotta carry it under here and lift it up and put it in here to 
be honest, this next part, I really don't think I can do it alone and I'm not even gonna try, but it's possible. Possible you can do it alone. Great fit right here. Everything's gonna work out just fine. So I got some more bolt holes to screw through and we'll get this thing all clamped up and we'll put this back up. My arms are just so beat. All right, so Sam helped me add two more bolts to each of these brackets. I just didn't feel great about just having two. So we got these six bolts, we got plenty of washers, and it's time to stick this back up. So as you can see, I've got some big washers up here where I could fit them. This thing is, you know, really clamped down. Whole situation is rock solid. This thing ain't going nowhere. Nowhere? Where you going? Nowhere. Well, not gonna lie guys, I am pretty beat, but we must move on. The next move is I've got to get the signal wire from the head unit to here. That should be easy. And then we're gonna route a wire from our electrical cabinet to here to supply this with power. It's gonna be a 20 amp circuit with a 12 gauge wire. Oh, you stay? Okay, there you come. It's up to you. So we do have a wiring diagram here, but because the colors on the signal cable don't match up with the colors on the wiring diagram here, I'm gonna leave this to the HVAC tech. He knows a lot of stuff by heart and I'll just be making work that he has to undo if I get it wrong. I got a snack for you. Oh, thanks. Oh my gosh, that looks yummy. Thanks so much, Nova. I appreciate it. I've done everything I can now. I've gotta call the tech, wait for him to come, finish up this job. So I'll update you guys then, except I'm still here. So see you in a second. <laughs> Just chilling on our new cushions. Got some bolsters. Very nice. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so the mini split is all installed, but I have passed off the final connections. Basically, the only thing left to do is make the connections with the line set, which he has done to the inside unit and the condenser. Wire the signal cable to the condenser to match what I wired on the inside unit. And then you take this vacuum pump and you pull the refrigerant that's pre-charged into the unit. That's basically all there is to it. Mini split connections have to be torqued to the right specs. And of course, he also had to flare and cut the line set. We're almost done. We Got him flared in, cut the line set. Make sure it's not leaking with a leak detector um, on the joints. And then gonna go inside and make sure those are not leaking inside. And then we should be done. Awesome. Thank you, Dennis. Mm -hmm. So yeah, this is something that you generally can do if you have these tools available to you. But in my opinion, it's probably better off to just hire a professional who already owns these tools and you know for sure that this work, this final bit is done right. Hey, oh. Ooh. It's turbo time. It's turbo time. All right, it's turbo. Now it's kicking. I can feel it back here. Yeah, thank you so much, yeah. Dennis. Yeah, Thanks you can for keep the it help. It was nice to meet you. Yeah. It is getting chilly back there. Yeah, it is. Oh, you can feel it cold all the way over oh, here. It's so cold. And you know it's going to be clutch. And you get to close the doors. We're going to close the doors, and it's going to be a cold little cocoon back here. Your bus is so much better than ours. <laughs> the rest is the OG. Thank you.